Leslie Johnson here again. While no one wants to lose an animal, there are a number of options for dealing with livestock mortalities in the state of Nebraska. This presentation will give you an overview of these options. I want to say a special thanks to Tommy Bass at Montana State University for the original development of these slides following the avian influenza outbreak in 2015. Because of his efforts, my job of developing this discussion was much easier. One of the five options available to producers in the state of Nebraska is burial. In many areas, however, it is not recommended because of issues with depth to groundwater and high permeable soils, which allow for nutrient re leaching from the carcass down the soil profile. In the case of an animal that was lost to disease, one of the big concerns with burial is that the pathogen that caused the disease may persist in the soil. So if for some reason the soil does get dug up in that area, whether or not the carcass has already decomposed, there is a risk that the pathogen could spread to other animals. Another option is to landfill the animal. If you can find a landfill that will accept animal carcasses, it is within state law to dispose of them in this manner. There is concern, though, with this. If the animal died from a disease, that disease is not inactivated and the transport may spread it to other animals. Additionally, there may be costs associated with this method of disposal. Yet another option for disposal of mortalities is to incinerate or burn them. This is more commonly done for smaller animals as incinerators require large amounts of fuel to achieve high enough temperatures. One of the benefits of an incineration, though, is that it does inactivate pathogens, so the disease that caused the animal's death cannot be spread once the animal has been incinerated. The mortality management plan that I grew up with, and I think has probably been one of the more common methods in Nebraska, is rendering. Transport is an issue when an animal had a disease, though. While rendering does inactivate the pathogens, until the animal reaches the facility and is cooked, the disease may still be spread. Additionally, the number of rendering facilities is decreasing, and therefore finding a rendering service in some areas may be difficult. And if the rendering truck doesn't come on the day you call, you may need to consider on-site refrigeration or some other type of storage. The fifth option for mortality management is to compost the carcasses on site. Composting can be as simple as surrounding the animal on all sides with carbon, which results in a stable, earthy smelling product. This sounds simple, and you might think it's impossible to do it incorrectly, but that's not the case. The pile must be constructed properly in order for the carcass to compost fully. A layer of carbon materials underneath the animal is absolutely necessary to improve airflow in the pile and absorb any liquids created by the decomposing carcass. There are lots of reasons why composting is a good method of disposal, not the least of which is the fact that pathogens are inactivated and there's no risk of transporting the disease off-site because the animals never leave the facility. Some never even leave the building before composting. As an added bonus, the final material after composting is a good soil amendment that can be high in nutrients and organic matter. No doubt the time and space necessary for composting is something to think through and the source of carbon material needs to be considered when planning to compost because without enough carbon, composting will not occur. You'll just have a rotten, stinky mess. Depending on how you choose to handle your compost piles, the cost can be large or small. You might decide that your facility merits having an area that is specifically designated for mortality composting. Or you may opt to incorporate mortality composting into an area of your existing manure storage. For example, you could compost mortalities in bins or piles that may or may not be permanent. Depending on the size of the animals you'll be handling, you may choose to build a rotary composter, which turns the composting materials continuously, thus decreasing composting time. In the case of catastrophic mortalities such as avian influenza or PEDV, composting is suitable and is the recommended method of dealing with the car carcasses. There is low risk of transmission to other operations because it is done on site, often inside the buildings where the animals were housed and pathogens are inactivated by the high temperatures reached during the composting process. Remember to have a plan for mortalities, both on a daily basis and for catastrophes. Because carbon materials are needed in such large amounts during catastrophic losses, if you need assistance finding those carbon materials, Amy Schmidt developed a list of those sources. 
That list can be found online at our website at manure.unl.edu and is available on the USB flash drive that you'll receive at your LAT training.